Yusuf Omar, you're from Hashtag Our Stories. Uh, before we start talking about the Hashtag Our Stories, what is the, what, what is, what is, what is this for a sort of a glasses you've got? I'm wearing the snap spectacles, so it's a camera. I press this button, you see a little flashing light, and I'm taking video of you right now. You've got seven or eight cameras trained on me. I've got one camera trained on you. I believe that the future of storytelling is not necessarily mobile, it's wearable like this. And, and, and uh, so what is the quality? Is that already good as well, the quality of your glasses? Yeah, for sure. It shoots high definition video. And, and what's most interesting is that it shoots circular video. So the big debate in media is do we shoot vertical, uh, nine by six, or do we shoot landscape for like television? Uh, some people believe that the future of video is round, meaning you can watch it in vertical or landscape in either orientation. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, uh, this is a piece of vertical, uh, a round video. So you can watch it in any direction. I think that's a really clever innovation. Uh, they all laughed at Christopher Columbus when he said that the world was round, and I think they're going to laugh when they say that the future of video is round. Yeah, that's good. Um, tell me about Hashtag uh, Our Stories. What do you do? Hashtag Our Stories is a global news network. We train communities in marginalized uh, parts of the world to tell stories with their mobile phones, and we create shows, and we create stories. Uh, imagine being able to effectively have a global footprint and tell stories all over the world, but entirely with communities on mobile devices. It's created and, and shot by communities, but it's curated and edited by journalists. Why is this combination so important? At the end of the day, we have a floodgate of user-generated content. When we had the democratization of media, everybody with a phone can be a reporter. It's become increasingly important to help make sense of the noise and to identify the voices. Fact-checking has become important. Verification has become important. People often think with the advent of mobile journalism, is the journalist's job at risk? Are editors at risk? Are we going to lose traditional newsrooms? I don't think so. I think they've become more relevant to help us work out what is and isn't real. How does the mobile or future, um, um, uh, fu future things like your, your glasses um, change storytelling? At the end of the day, good storytelling and good journalism has always been about a variety of perspectives. We believe that more angles means more perspectives. More perspectives gives us more truth. Uh, at the end of the day, we keep missing some of the biggest stories of our time. Traditional media have failed us. They didn't see Brexit coming in the UK. They didn't see Donald Trump coming in the US. And one of the reasons is they stopped talking to real people and real voices. Technology like this, technology like phones, technology like drones and 360 cameras simply give us more sources and help us tap back into what people are really feeling. How... Uh how does the, the community aspect of, uh, of Hashtag Our Stories work? Because it's an important thing of what you do, right? So what do, have people in, what do they have in common? Absolutely. We travel to places where there are communities that are often talked a lot about, but very rarely talked to. So take refugees, for example, arriving. Often we see the story in traditional media of a bunch of brown men arriving on the coast of, of, of Europe, and that's kind of how we tell the story of refugees. Actually, the real story is real human beings, young men like me who have real stories who we can relate to, getting into those stories. We tell a lot of stories about other marginalized groups, such as women that wear the niqab, that cover their face. Of course, it's a big debate across Europe right now. Should or shouldn't women be allowed to cover their faces? We often speak to a right-wing politician and we speak to maybe an Islamic leader, but we don't speak to the actual women themselves and get a sense of what they feel. So it's really going back to good old-fashioned journalism, but simply using mobile journalism as a new source. Uh, can you give me an idea, how, how big are you now? How many people do, uh, do use your site, your uh, mobile uh, your mobile app? We have been to 40 countries over the last four months, ranging from Korea to Palestine, all over the world. Uh, and we've had hundreds of submissions now. Uh, our real challenge is about uh, scaling up now. How do we train people around the world and how do we curate their content without physically having to go and visit each community, without physically having to come and do the training in person. That's the challenge. And we're going to really be looking over the next three to six months at developing new ways of doing that using technology. So uh, does it mean online learning? Does it mean making formats so people can use or reuse? I don't think that training people is going to come in the form of a PDF document or a little handbook. 
I think it might be a completely new way of understanding. It might be teaching people through their camera how to shoot. It might be an app. It might be uh, some sort of a toolkit, but some sort of a way that we can impart this knowledge. Because at the end of the day, you have the digital haves and you have the digital have-nots. You have people that are on different sides of the digital divide. Some people, such as here in the Netherlands, are very comfortable with their phones. They know how to take selfies. But in many parts of the world where people can't read or write, uh, they can't communicate with their local governance or policymakers, their only means of expression is communicating through the phone. But simply recording the video is not enough. They need to understand engagement. They need to understand how to make their videos travel online. And ensuring that virality is very important to us. You said uh, scaling is now one of the one of the, the, the things we're looking at. How can we uh, help people around the world tell their uh, stories? Um, if you take the other part of scaling, how do you get the stories to 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 people? How do you do that? I think a big part of delivering the stories to the audiences is, is distribution. And distribution nowadays you have to pay for, right? If you look at Facebook, it's a pay-to-play platform where you're boosting and all sorts of spaces you're having to spend on marketing. So really, in order to scale and in order to deliver that content, you need to develop sustainable revenue streams, monetization. That's really exciting to us. And there's a couple of spaces we see. We see a branded content possibility here where we can say, hey, some of the mobile journals and content will be sponsored by big companies who want to affiliate to social good stories. The other play we see is a marketplace. If I'm doing a story on somebody who's making tables out of recycled wood, if we can connect those tables and that recycled wood to audiences in New York and audiences here in Hilversum who might buy that table, you're then taking small size businesses and connecting them with uh, potential audiences and customers using video. When, when you started uh, uh, this, what, what was the big why for you? I had spent the last eight years working at some of the biggest news organizations in the world. I had worked at CNN in London. I had been the mobile editor at the Hindustan Times. I'd been a foreign correspondent on television in Syria and across various uh, civil wars. And I'd seen time and time again how traditional media kept failing us. They failed to pick the biggest themes and biggest stories of our time. And sometimes on a personal level, when doing the most intimate of stories, when interviewing rape survivors and human trafficking survivors, I realized that the, the, the conventional setup of storytelling, the boom mics and lights in your face, wasn't the most authentic way to storytell. For me, the most authentic storytelling was when we forgot that the camera was even there, or even better, when I wasn't even there, when you were able to tell your own story, story and I was simply the journalist that was making sense of it, that was adding the context. I realized that there was a gap in the market, that traditional media are chasing the what happened, where it happened, when it happened, who happened. All of those things are happening on social media anyway. They're being beaten every single time. The only space that we have as media to play in is the why and the how. Why do things happen? How can we make them better? The insight, the commentary, and we saw a gap that we could get into that market. So for you, there will always be a, um, an important part for journalism journalists. Journalists will be relevant, but journalists will have to fundamentally change their skill set. They'll have to come with the understanding that they will never be the first on the ground for a big breaking news story. They may never have to go onto the ground at all. We need to get into the idea that curation is the new creation. We need to get smarter at how we verify. We need to use technology to look at the metadata baked into videos and images and make sense of what's really going on. The journalist is relevant, but the journalist today needs to be a technologist, and the technologist needs to understand how they can curate its if uh, people are watching and want to start with telling their stories with their mobile phone, what is the biggest lesson you learned? Four buckets we need to fulfill for it to be uh, relevant to us. It needs to be shareable. Audiences need to have something that's worth sharing. Often in television, we don't think about sharing. It needs to be factual, it needs to be unique, and it needs to be constructive. If you can fulfill those four buckets, you have a really compelling piece of video content that will do well online. Thank you very much, because you're really busy, you have to go uh, somewhere else. Um, I love uh, your story, I love what you're, what, what you're doing, so where can, people, uh, where can people find what you do? We're entirely on social media, so each country has its own unique platform. Hashtag our stories being the global one, we have hashtag our SA for South Africa, hashtag South Asia for India, hashtag Palestine for uh, the Palestine region. All of them are unique because we believe the internet's getting smaller. We believe that Hilversum should have its own hashtag our Hilversum. Uh, because really, and then 
what's really also important is connecting local stories to global audiences. If we can find here in Hilversum that they are fixing bridges in a very clever way and we can take that same wisdom and expertise and apply it to a village in India, we're really excited about that. So yeah, this is hashtag our stories. What's yours? Hashtag uh, Amsterdam, man. I, I'll, I will take M the Amsterdam one. Is that okay? Love it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Je hoorde een uh, meer dan enthousiaste en bevlogen uh, maker uh, die uh, nu er weer snel uh, vandoor moet. Want uh, hij heeft een drukke dag. Hij is gisteren hier gekomen, gaat vandaag weer weg. Maar hashtag Our Story is uh, zijn verhaal. En uh, dat moet een verhaal van de wereld worden. We zijn straks weer bij je terug. We doen hier de hele dag interviews vandaan over de toekomst van de journalistiek. In ieder geval over de toekomst van de mobiele journalistiek en de mogelijkheden daarvan. Tot zo.